everyone and welcome to our webinar. It's not quite two yet. Uh, once two hits, I'll just show you a couple features and then we'll give everyone a few minutes to join. Sometimes people are late, uh, but it's two. Okay. Well, let me show you a few cool things that are fairly new in Grist. Um, you may or may not have already seen it, but we do have column descriptions and widget descriptions now. So to add a description into a widget, you would just click on the widget title and then you can add a description. So keep it simple, all deals. Give it a second, I just made a change in the template so I have to create my own copy to apply the changes. There we go, okay. So when you add a, call, or a widget description, it'll add the little eye information icon, and then when you hover over it, it'll show your description. So it's pretty handy if you have a bunch of people working in a table, but you're the one building it. Chances are you understand what everything is, uh, but it might take someone else a minute to become familiar. Now you can add these descriptions uh, to explain what the table is used for, what the widget is used for, so they can quickly understand the setup. Now you can also do this at the column level. So let's click a column. And then in the creator panel on the right hand side, which you can open and close with this little green vertical bar under the column tab, then you can add a description here too. You can also do it when you double click. It's like you are renaming your column or adding a column. You can add the description there as well. So you have the option here or in the creator panel. And again, it just has that little eye icon. You hover over it, it'll give you the column description. So sometimes if you're trying to add too much information into the column title, you can keep it simple and just add a little description um, so that your title is nice and short. But if someone's not familiar with it, they can hover and get more details. Okay. Looks like we have a decent sized group. So we'll go ahead and get started we didn't have any questions submitted for this round um so if you do have any questions feel f especially on the webinar feel free to same for the end or if you want to ask in the chat i know anais is viewing it um but always feel free to submit questions at, when you register for our webinars and we're always happy to answer them at the beginning welcome to our june webinar um today's actually the first webinar in our new series which is on reverse engineering templates all of the previous webinars can be found on YouTube, and then you'll find a recording of this one on there as well. We have a playlist dedicated just to webinars, and you will get an email when this one's uploaded to YouTube. Since you've registered for the webinar, you will get that email as soon as it's up. So today we're going to deconstruct the software deal templates tracker, tracker template. Uh, uh, so that's what you see on my screen right now. We'll cover importing an Excel file. We'll learn how to write some formulas, summarize data, and create charts and dashboards so we can get the most out of our data. So we'll take a look at the software deals template before we get started so we have an idea of what the endpoint is, and then we'll work through how to build it. So on our first page, this is our all deals page. Here you can see all of the software deals that we have purchased. We can see information about them. We click into a deal here on the left. The card on the right updates to show us uh, the information for that specific deal. If we want to add a new deal, we can do so at the bottom of the page. And a new record is created, and we can plug in all of the information here in the card view. We can also do some easy filtering. 
if I want to view all of my annual deals, I can do so. Maybe I also want to see only active ones. You can do that with the filter buttons at the top. Next, we have our spending dashboard. So this dashboard has a lot of information on it. Uh, here at the top, we can see how much we've spent total on these software deals. In the next, we can see how much we've spent based on the license type, whether that's lifetime, annual, or free. Below that, we can see which of our deals are still active, inactive, or refunded, and we can see the costs associated with those. And then we've got these two really nice charts. The one on the right, upper right, pie chart, telling us how much we've spent in each category. So we can see that, you know, we've spent the most in project management. And then below that is our spending over time. So we can see what our spending was for each month. And it looks like here in August uh, was our most. We spent $428 that month. And then our third page, expiration dates, this gives us information about when things expire. And our first table, it shows if any deals are expiring, and it looks like none are expiring in the next 15 days. Uh, but on the right here, it does show that we have 10 that have expired. So overall, it seems like this is a lot of information. Um, and we can actually take a look at the raw data page here under tools on the left to see all of the data that these pages are built on. So if we look at our table list here, we have the all deals table, which has quite a bit of information in it. We have a Gris doc tour. This table is actually used to create our document tour that guides you around the document. So we can ignore that one. And then we have a bunch of summary tables down here, and these are all built from the data in the all deals table. So really everything we see in this template is built off the single data table, all deals. So let's build this out from the beginning. From the Grist Town page, we can create a new document by clicking this green add new button, and we'll just create an empty document. And let's take a minute to think through our tables and views and create some requirements as we go through. So first, we know we only have one table of data and that's all deals. Uh, so for our first step, we'll create a new table, all deals. And then we want to create a bunch of dashboards. So if we remember back, we have um, the dashboard first dashboard that showed all of our deals and it was an easy place to view those deals, filter those deals, and then also add new ones. So we'll create a dashboard where we can easily see all of our deals and add new ones. And then We'd want to create a spending dashboard so we can quickly see how much we've spent on deals, see what's active. Um, it's helpful to have visual tools so we can see our spending um, and we can do that breakdown of categories, see much, how much we've spent per category, and then uh, how much have I spent each month. Okay, so those are the four questions we want answered with our spending dashboard. And then last but not least, we want an expiration date dashboard. So we can quickly see what has expired, what is about to expire. And so that'll be our fourth and final step. Okay, 
And let's just create a little toggle column and then we can check things off as we go. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is create our table of fields. Most of the time you have data existing elsewhere that you want to import into Christ. So I have our software deals in an Excel file and we can import this file into our document uh, by clicking the screen add new button, import from file, select it from your computer files. And then we have the option to import into an existing table or a new one. I'm going to import into a new one and it'll create all of these column headers for us, make it really easy. There we go. So now all of our data is into Grist. When you import into Grist, it does check the data in each of your columns and guesses what type of data it is. Um, and so you'll see that we have like text columns over here on, let me zoom in, in the creator panel here on the right hand side, you can see the column types. So we've got text, numeric, uh, and date. So it will guess if it's one of those three. After importing, we can make additional changes to the column types and the column formatting. So to start, we see that cost was imported as numeric, but we know that this is a currency value. So we can update the formatting for our column um, just by clicking on this dollar sign under number format, and that changes it into a currency. Right under that, we can actually select what currency we want it to be in. Uh, my default is US dollars. You can change your document's default under document settings, which you can access under tools in the left hand navigation panel. You'll see settings. And so right here, you can change your currency. And then you can also update your default time zone here. And then that's that's where this is pulling from. But you can always change it uh, either in your defaults or right here if you'd like. So we also have two date columns that are imported as date. It recognized them as that, but we can change the format further. Under date format, you see that this is what it's following right now. If you select the drop down. There's a bunch of options that you can select from. So we'll just select a basic one. You can also select a custom one. At the bottom, it would just follow the letter format that you see um, above, and you can mess around with it to find the custom format you like best. Gris does have many other column types beyond text, numeric, and date, uh, and you see them all in this drop down. These three are the most commonly used, and they're the three that it'll guess when you import data. We'll get to learn about two other column types today, but if you want to learn more about all of the column types available in GRIST, check out our webinar on understanding column types. I'll share that link with you. And in that webinar, we do cover each and every one of the column types. But next, we'll learn about choice column types. Um, as the software deals tracker actually uses three different choice columns. So these are useful when a column should contain a selection from a specific set of values. For example, if we look at this status column, we have three values that are repeated, active, refunded, and inactive. And so that's handy if you just have these three values to select from, you can pick one, move on. So we can change the column type to choice. And you'll see that it automatically recognizes the values in the column as a choices. So we can just apply that. Now, if you wanted to add more, you could just click edit, add a choice, save, and it would now be in the dropdown for select them. I'll delete that. You can also assign colors to your choices. So 
in the edit screen, you can click on that little box with the T and modify the fill. You can modify the text. Uh, be sure to click save after you add remove choices or update colors and then it will apply. So we can also change our license column to a choice column. You'll see again we just have three choices lifetime, annual, and free. Just select choice and apply and now we've got our choices. So when we go and enter a new deal it's really easy. We can start typing and autofill um, based on the choices. So our category column also is a great choice column type. It's less obvious um, at first glance since we don't just have three choices. Um, but if you think about it, there's only a set list of categories that you could choose from. And you can always add more categories as needed. A category you need isn't already in the list. but a big benefit to using a choice column, especially for something like this, is it eliminates spelling errors and eliminates having multiple versions of the same value. For example, we have uh, AI in the list. Someone might enter artificial intelligence, someone else might enter AI, and that's going to now recognize these as two separate categories. They're the same. So if you have a set list and people are picking from it, then you avoid that issue as well. And it makes it easier to analyze the data as we build our dashboards. So now that we've imported our data and we've got our deals table set up with our column types, our next step is to create a dashboard where we can easily see all of the deals and add new ones. So one of the easiest ways to improve a view like this with a table full of data and a lot of columns, difficult to read, is we can add a card widget. So under Add New, we'll just add a widget to the page. Now under Select Widget, we can select Card. And under the data, we want to select All Deals. We just want to show the same data. And then we get the Select By option. Now here we can select All Deals. It'll look for any tables on the page that allow linking. Now, because we're adding the same data set to the page, it's called same record linking. So when I select a deal in the all deals table, this card widget is going to update to show us that deal. So if I select WYSI, now the details for WYSI appear in the card. Now you can also edit this card view to be something more useful to you if you wanna get rid of fields or just move them around. And you would do that in the creator panel under the card tab. You can change the theme and you can also change the layout, just click this green button. And then you can move things around, just drag and drop and it will show you with the little, uh, outlines where it's going to drop. Now you can also resize them by dragging between two. And so then you can get the layout that you really love. But now that all of these columns are shown in this card widget, we don't really need them in this table where they're cluttered. So what we can do is actually hide them from the table. Now you can right click and hide a column that way, but if you're hiding a bunch of columns at once, what you can do is under the table tab of the creator panel, scroll down, you'll see visible columns. We'll select all, we're not gonna hide all, but we can think through what columns we'd wanna see at a glance versus what columns do we wanna see just when we click on the record so that it appears in the card. So product, that something we'd want to see. We want to know the product name, then we know which one to click on. Category, that's a good thing to see. Uh, license, we can hide that. I'm going to uncheck product and category. We don't want to hide those. Code, hide. 
link, plan. Status might be something we'd want to see at a glance and quickly see what's active, what's refunded and active. And that's it. We'll just keep those three, product category and status, and we'll hide the rest. And now we just have three columns of data. And so it's not overwhelming when we're looking at it. And we can also move columns around this way. But you can also do it again in this right hand panel. Just click and drag there. So now we've got a much nicer view uh, than that table with all of the data all at once. Now to make it easier to search through our existing deals, we can pin some filters. So if you click on this filter icon and then add column under filter, you can select a column you'd want to filter by. We'll select category. Now we're going to leave all of the options selected. We don't actually want to apply any filters. We just want to pin a filter button. And that's what this pin is doing. It's green, which means it's pinned up top. So now we've got this pinned filter for category. Now, if you didn't want it, you could unpin it. We do want it. And we'll actually add a couple more. So let's go ahead and add another one for status. Again, we don't want to filter by anything. We just want to have the button. And then one more for license. And be sure to click save. If you don't click save in this menu and you click away, you can still click save up here. But if it's all green, it means you need to save it. Click save. And now we have these filter buttons where we can quickly see, okay, these are the graphic design products I have. Or I just want to see my active free deals. And there we go. It allows you to quickly filter using those buttons but you don't have to save them so that you'd still have this view of all of your products all the time. And so that takes care of this dashboard. So let's go ahead and rename our page. If we jump back to the actual template, you'll see that we have these handy little emojis in the page names and many users ask, how do we add emojis throughout our templates? And it's quite simple. Um, you just copy, and paste from somewhere on the internet. I use Emojipedia. It's easy to search and they have a little copy button. So we search for an emoji, you click on it in the list, and then it's got this copy button. So you can copy it to your uh, clipboard. So if I go back, rename, Looks like my internet's a little slow. Oops. Copy it from there. But you can use emojis everywhere. Again, just copy paste them. Okay, so let's jump back to our workflow here. We've created our all deals table and we created a dashboard now so we can see our new deals see all of our deals and add new ones. So next step is to create a spending dashboard. So we want to answer how much spent overall, how much have we spent per license, how much per category, and how much have we spent per month. So let's just add a new page with the all deals table so we know the data we're working with so we can think through it. Okay, first question, how much have we spent overall? So we want to sum all values in this cost column. To find a quick sum, we can highlight it, highlight the column, and then you actually get a sum in the bottom right hand corner. But we want to be able to see this value in a dashboard without having to select anything. So to do this, we can add a summary table. Um, I'm going to share our help article on did it work? I don't think it did. There we go. On summary tables, so if you want to read more on them, uh, there's the link. But to add a new one, go add new widget to the page. Um, and then where you'd select the data, you'd actually select the summation icon. And that's what creates a summary table of that data. We have the option to group by 
different columns to summarize our data into different groups. But we just want an overall summary of all data. Um, so we're just not going to group by anything. Just select the summation icon and add to page. And so now that gives us a summary of our total cost that we've spent. Next, how much spent per license? And so we've got this column type license. It, we want to know of all lifetime, how much have I spent? All annual, how much have I spent? So now we can do the same thing as before, create a summary table. But this time, we can group by license. And then it'll group those three options together uh, so we know how much we've spent per, for all lifetime, for all annual. And there we go. I'm going to collapse this widget so we don't get too crowded. So our next question was, let's see. Oh, I left one off. There's one more thing that we'd probably want to know is how many deals do we have in each status? And so again, summary table, but grouped by status. We'll add a widget to the page, click the summation icon, and then status. And to rearrange widgets, hover to the upper left of the widget, you see these two vertical bars appear, and then you can just click and drag, and it has the dotted lines so you know where it's going to drop. Now for visual information, we want to know how much have we spent per category, and how much have we spent per month. So again, add new widget to page. But this time we actually want chart widgets because we want those table or charts for that visual information. Same thing though, we're going to click that summation icon to create a summary table. And then for we want to know how much we spent per category. So we're going to group by category. And we have a nice bar chart which would be fine, uh, but let's change it. You have many different chart types to pick from here. We'll just make a pie chart. Now, right now, it's doing count. So I've purchased two productivity deals, two support deals. We don't care about that. We want to know how much we've spent. So I can just either delete the count or move costs to the top. It's whatever that first series listed is going to be what shows. So now I can see, okay, project management, I've spent $328. And then last, how much have I spent each month? So if I look at this, I can see the date that uh, one of these deals has been activated, but I don't know which month. If I tried to group by this column, it would group all of the dates together, or also of the same dates together, which isn't super helpful. I don't want to know how much I spent on September 27th. I want to know how much I spent in September. And so what we can do is actually add a formula column that pulls that month value for us. So to enter a formula, you just equals key, and that starts entering a formula. So we're going to use Python's STFR time method. Let me share their help documentation on that. So if you wanted to learn more about it, uh, there's Python's documentation on it. First, you would call the column that contains your date. And for us, that's date activated. So we can just click it to insert it into our formula. Next, we want to call the method, which is str of time. I can start typing, and Gris will guess that that's what you want. It sure is. Now with str of time, it's converting it into its string format, and so you you want to use quotations because you're working with the string. Now with str of time, there's codes to pull different information, and I'll share that page. So you have that link. But this is the link I've just shared, is this cheat sheet. And so you can look through, find what you want to be displayed, and then you can use the code that they have. So first, I want the year 
as a four digit number. So that is the percent sign Y. And so that's the code I need to represent my four digit year. And then I also want to know the month. So I want it as a zero padded number. And so that's percent and lowercase m. And so now I can use those codes in my formula. So the first one was percent Y uh, for the four digit year. And then we'll want some sort of uh, either a space or a dash, something to separate the two values, because again, it's a string, so it's going to represent it exactly as you type it. And then we want the two digit month, so it's percent M for that. There we go. And so now we've got the month. Uh, it has a year attached because we want to make sure that September 21 is going to be grouped separately from September 2022. And now we can group by this column. So I add widget to page, all deals, and now group by month. And then don't forget to change your widget type to chart. Um, I do that a lot. So let me show you a, a quick way to do it if you do forget and you add it to page and it's a table. In the creator panel on the right hand side near the table column, you can click this change widget button and then uh, just change it to chart that way. So don't feel like if for so long I was deleting uh, widgets anytime I accidentally add it as a table versus a chart, but you can just come over here and change it. And for this one, let's just do a line chart. And we don't care about comp, we just want cost. And then we can move it. Now, I only added the all deals table so that we could review as we created stuff. But we can go ahead and delete that from this page. And now we have our spending dashboard. And I can rename it. Okay. So now we've created our spending dashboard. We answered all of the questions check that off okay so last but not least we have the expiring deals dashboard we want to know what has expired and what's expiring soon so we'll go ahead add a new page again we'll just add the all deals table so we can see the data we're working with Now the first question, what deals have expired? So in our data that we're working with, we have an expiration date, but no great way to quickly see if that date has passed. Obviously we can look and say, this has not passed, this has. But we want something that's faster to see. So we can add a new column, expired. And now we're going to use the toggle column type. But the toggle, it makes it really easy to see if something's yes, no, true, false. So go ahead and change our column type to toggle. Now you can check. You can also change it to a switch. We'll leave it with switch. Now you could manually go through and check when things are expired. But we want everything done manually. Or, sorry, not manually, automatically. So we're going to do this with a formula. So up here, under column behavior, we're going to change it into a formula. And we want to know when that expiration date has passed. So if we think about it, if today's date is later, then the expiration date means the expiration date has passed. So we, you can, we can use the function today, which is in our function reference, to get today's current date. And let me share a link to the function reference. Function reference is a great thing to have saved. Um, of course, it's hard to remember all of the different functions that are available in Chris. One sec. So having that 
handy uh, is great. And we're, we'll cover a second function that's available under function reference. But first, we're going to use today, which re returns the current date. So today. And if today's date is greater than the value in the expiration, if applicable column, we can just click to apply that into our formula so you don't have to type all that. Then this will return true. Okay, so we say we get a lot of type errors. If you click into one of these cells, it'll actually give you more information as to the error you're actually seeing. There's a lot of type errors out there. It's not going to be real helpful. But now when we expand it, we see that. Uh, greater than is not supported between instances of date time dot date and none type. So that means you can't compare a date with nothing. We see that this error occurs wherever there is no expiration date value. Mathematically, it cannot compare nothing to today's date. And so it throws that error. We can modify our formula with if error. So if the value returned is an error, we can tell it to return false instead. Let me show you that in our function reference. So here's if error, and then in parentheses, first you're gonna put your value, which it returns that value if there's no error, and then you do a comma, and then you do your value that it should return if there is an error. So for our first, where you see value, that's just going to be our formula that we just used. Assuming that does not throw an error, that's what we want returned. If it does throw an error, it means that there's no date here. And if there's no date here, it means it's not expired, which means we can just return false. So let's modify this again. So we can add if error, and again, crystal autofill for you. Oops. Put a parentheses around it. And again, remember the first value is what it's going to return if there's no error. And so we want it to return if today is greater than the expiration date. And then we do a comma, and then we enter the value it should return if there is an error. And in this case, got my caps on. We want it to return false. And so now all those errors are cleared, and it just returns false. Now, when using if error, it does clear the error completely. So it is important to write your formula first, make sure that there's no other errors other than the fact that this is a none type value. Um, because if there were other issues, you would no longer know because it would just be returning false. So just enter your formula first without if error so you can review it. So now with the toggle, we can also change this color of the toggle. Expired, let's change it to red. Seems more applicable than the blue. And then now we want a view that only shows our expired deals. So we can add our filter, filter by expired, only show true values. We don't need to have the uh, filter button pinned since we aren't going to be messing with it. It's just our expired deals view. And then finally, let's rename our widget so it's obvious what we are looking at. So right now it says all deals. That's the name of the table. Uh, so in this first line, that would be renaming the underlying data. We don't want to rename the data itself. We just want to rename this widget. So that would be the second line here. And we're just going to name this expired. And then last but not least, let's hide a bunch of these columns. Again, using uh, this option in the creator panel just makes it faster to hide many columns at once. You can always select and right click and hide columns. Um, 
But when I'm hiding more than one, I prefer to do it here on the right hand side. Again, you can select all and then deselect the ones you actually want to keep. Hide. And then we have this handy little expired view. So the next question we wanted to answer was what deals are expiring soon? So not already expired, but upcoming expired. We'll just add the all deals table again. Move it down so we can see more of it. And so once again, there's no way to see what's expiring soon unless I sit and look at the dates in the expiration column and be like, oh yeah, that's upcoming. But no one wants to take the time to do that. So what we can do is create another formula column, just like expired, except this time upcoming expired. So let's say expiring in the next 15 days. So we'll just call it expiring soon. Once again, we'll make it a toggle column. And then we'll set it as a formula column. So this formula, a little more complicated again, because we're working with a range of dates now. So we want to know if it's expiring in the next upcoming 15 days, then we want it to return as true. So we can do a difference of dates. So think through it. If we do the expiration date minus today and the expiration date is upcoming, it should return a positive number. So we want positive numbers. Click. Okay. So we can click it in to enter the column type column rather than having to type the whole thing. And then minus today. Again, we're using that today function. So if that date minus today's date, and we want to convert it to days, because we have um, a date value is going to be the month day and year, convert it to days. Now, if those number of days are greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero, but let's say less than or equal to 15, so the expiration date is anywhere from today to 15 days from now, then it'll return true. So we see a couple are expiring soon, but we also see that same type error again. I, because of these non-type values, we're gonna see this error. So once again, we can add our if error message. So if there's no error, we want it to tell us true or false to that formula. But if there is an error, we want it to return false. And there we go. It gets rid of the error, just returns false if there's no expiration date. And now we can see uh, quite a few are expiring soon. So to change the toggle again, you just change this default cell style. Make sure I'm clicked to the right one. Okay. This bottom one is the fill. And then the top one is the text, which in toggles case is just the color of the toggle. So we'll change it to orange. Now we can filter again to create our expiring soon view. Just show us the true values. We'll unpin that filter and save. Let's rename our widget. Again, to override the widget title, it's that second uh, field. And then we can hide some columns. Probably want that expiration date. And then if it's expiring soon, go. And now we've got our dashboard. So last but not least, rename the page. And then we've got our template now.
Ah, yes. Okay. So what we can also do is use our relative date filters. So I'm going to add a new page. So you can do this same expired and uh, expiring soon using our date filters. So create a new view. Okay. So now we're going to create filters based on this expiration date column. So with this, you can filter based on relative dates. So starting with things that are already expired, start would be today. I'm sorry, it should be end is today. There we go. Okay. Yep. So, do, do, okay. Now we can see that with our end date as today, it doesn't matter what the start date, but if the date ends or is before today, it means it's expired. And so we could just save that filter. For expired we didn't even base it off of this column again we just based it off of this column so i could delete that column and it wouldn't change this view the, the view is the same because we're just basing on the date now let's add another view for the expiring soon so with this one again we'll add a filter based on the expiration date There we go. So the start date would be today, and then we want to know 15 days from now. I wonder if I can. You can just count. So it's a, that's seven days, that's 14. So 15 days from now, you just select a date on the calendar, and then it will give you the same view as what we did with expiring soon so it's a lot faster you don't have to do all the formulas um, you can just mess around with the dates it's really quite fun too um, because you can select friday two weeks from now you can select 43 days from now you can go with it as yeah, as you choose um, and yes it does update every day when you select the these filters up here now if you select a date that's a hard date but today seven days from now next seven days that's a relative filter and so it will continue to change with today's date awesome i know that was a lot of information but if you have any questions feel free to post in the chat i see there's one is there a way to display the values of the filters without clicking on it to see? There is not. You would have to click on it to see what that filter applied is, but you could always add, like, let's say I save this one. I could add a widget description that says deals expiring tomorrow up to seven days. something like that and then if you add that description uh, you just hover over the eye and it would be there any other questions that was a good one I I think that would be a really cool update if if we can do that in the future. Any other questions?
So next month, we are doing uh, another deconstructing templates webinar, and I think we're going to cover the digital sales CRM. So that one's going to have reverse lookups and dissecting the data two ways. Uh, lots of good stuff in that one. Oh, Mike, that's a good question. Um, if, Mike, if you could post your use case in the community forum, we could give you a answer on that. I'm not sure. Cool, thank you. And if you can do screenshots, that's helpful as well. We can get you an answer. Awesome. Any other questions? If not, we can uh, wrap it up. I hope you guys all have a wonderful afternoon, evening, whatever time it is. Good rest of your day and uh, We'll see you for next month.